One thing that I did not show in the last video is after day three, I did go ahead and spread some rock to try to keep the mud down as we received some light rains. So here we are day five of the reverse gabled clear span carport build. And if you've been following along, you may wonder what happened to day four. Last time we were on day three, well, day four, I was not here. It was a rainy day, and I thought that meant that we were not gonna be working that day, but my carpenter showed up and kept working. So he actually got the plywood on the end of one of the gables here, and uh, got the plywood on the, the other side of the roof. So the roof now is completely covered with plywood and uh, underlayment or you know synthetic tar paper. He did some work on one of the headers to beef it up in preparation for uh, aluminum jacketing. And uh, now we're gonna do the same on the other side. We're gonna work on the beam, thickening essentially the header and putting the plywood on the other gable over here. You can see this is the side that is done and we're going to mirror that work on the other side. Well, here we are at the end of day six on the carport and it got dark on me, but we're still gonna do a quick walk around to see what we did today. So the first big thing that we did this morning was put the ceiling in the carport. 
and this was originally going to be the last thing that we did but we rearranged our tasks today um, to align with when i would be here to help uh, the carpenter so we got the panels in uh, we had to trim them a little bit for width um, but we got them in one thing that we did have to decide is at which end we wanted to start the panels and the reason that matters is that uh, from where i'm standing right here you really cannot see any of the fasteners that are in the roof see those fasteners right there so you can see them all when you look from from this end and this is going to be the end uh, from which you know you are not looking when you pull in the driveway so we're back to the primary end here and i i think that was the right call to hide all the fasteners from this direction uh, the only risk is that you now actually, um, in certain lighting, can see the seams um, of the overlapping panels. So you can see the edge of each panel because we started at this end and worked our way that way to the far end. So it's a trade-off whether you want to see seams or screws. And it's a little bit hard to see now, but there is a little trim piece. It's just like a white L-shaped uh, piece of aluminum that went up around the edge of the ceiling before the panels went on so the ceiling panels are sitting over that l you can see that l hanging down there so that's just to make it to where you cannot see up past the end of the roofing panels or the ceiling panels next thing we did was install this uh what they call f channel around the outside so if you can see there it looks like an l but there's actually a piece above and below the end of that soffit so it actually looks like an a backwards F from this angle. Um, so there's a piece of aluminum above the soffit panel there and below, below is the one you can see. And then there's the flat side that goes against the LVL. So we put that F channel around and then uh, put the soffit into the F channel and then stapled the soffit to the bottom of the fascia board. And then we did that basically all the way around so we did it on the gable here we did it on the ends this is vented by the way this is vented soffit so you can see the perforations where on the gable it's all just solid because uh, you know it's not really going to provide great ventilation uh, up into the the attic if you will um, so this is all vented and we we put that on we put the gable on and then we put the fascia trim on so this is a larger piece of aluminum trim uh, that hangs down and uh, you can see there where we've yet to put it on this side so that's the 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 fly rafter or the fascia board um, and it's uncovered going up the gable but it's covered uh, down here on the on the end and this is what it looks like on the other side where the fly rafter is covered with that that fascia trim so that was pretty much what we did today what is still left is more aluminum work um, these headers are all being totally covered um, so you're not going to see the lvls at all or the doubled up uh, two by six reinforcements on the inside of the long LVLs. So those are all getting wrapped with aluminum, so it'll just be like an aluminum box all the way around. And then this is getting vinyl siding on the gable. So that's going to happen tomorrow. And unfortunately, uh, because of my schedule, I'm actually going to be away tomorrow. So the carpenter is going to be on his own, um, but that should be the last day. Uh, it's just wrapping the LVLs and then putting the siding on. So we've still got the aluminum there that's yet to be put up and uh, he said he thinks he can get that just fine without me um, so that's why we did the ceiling today and did not save it till last so this is the end of day six he will be on his own on day seven and i will check back at the end of tomorrow and see what it looks like and here is what the carport looked like after the trim and siding were done the carpenter did have to get a little bit more trim and a little bit more siding in order to get it finished, but in the end, I thought it looked really great. So then, after this point, the only thing that was left to do, really, was the roofing, and that was up next. Now we need to put the roof on, so that's what we're doing today. 
One of the main reasons why I built this carport was so that I could potentially put solar panels on top of it. And today, that's what we're gonna do. So it may have seemed like the footage of this install went really quickly, and that was largely because the install itself did go really quickly. So in about three hours, most of the work here was done. So now in one morning, I went from having no solar equipment to a full install. 
It's just waiting for the final, final inspection from the utility, and then it'll go live. Because of the way the carport was built, I asked them to run the conduit on the outside and not go through the roof. So we did a couple of LBs there, went around down the post. Uh, we encountered more tree roots, if you remember the trouble we had with that when building the carport. Uh, but we got the conduit laid and then up to another LB there. Then it goes from that corner of the house down the bottom row of siding and up to the main control panel and then to this disconnect and then the junction box that I already had installed from the previous video. And then of course the meter socket and the main breaker panel is directly behind the meter socket there. So everything's right here and I'm really happy with the install. This has been a long road to get to this point, but overall I'm happy to finally be here and just in time for Christmas. So I'm really happy with the way things worked out and I appreciate you going on this journey with me. Uh, I would like to know your thoughts though. What should be the next steps for the carport and uh, what would you have done differently, if anything? So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.